So then <laughs> we have Montez versus Andrade. I'm dying at the commentary. Tom Phillips says, Montez clearly not 100%. Montez is doing all these flip dives. <laughs> he, he's wrestling the same way he always does. Joe says, he looks 100% to me. Tom says, Joe, if you're poisoned, you're not fine two weeks later. I'm like, dude, guy, what are you talking guy, about? We don't know what kind of poison it was. Like, some poison, <laughs> you'll die immediately. I've gotten food poisoning, been totally fine 24 hours later. We don't know anything about this poison. So he's doing all these flips and flying around. <laughs> and then finally, Tom Phillips goes, well, he appears to be 100% physically, but mentally, this may still be weighing on him. I'm like, there's no evidence of mentally either. He's doing all of his moves, flipping, flying around. Didn't, didn't, didn't he, like, win the match? He wins the match when Z Bianca attacks Zelina, or Zelina attacks... None of this is DQ, by the way. Montez pins Andrade. He dances. He does his dance on the ramp. I mean, you can't be more 100% than Montez Ford here. So, so he's, he's I don't know what the point of poisoning the guy was. Um, And he got his revenge a week before the pay-per-view. Yeah. He did get his revenge, Dude, didn't he? What? I know, and he beat. What he beat is happening? What part of this show did you like? Drew McIntyre's interviews. That was ten minutes on this show, and it was three hours long. I like that. Um, I liked. I liked the pacing of the show. The uh, pacing. Liked, Every yeah, match going a minute, and then someone ran in. Well, at least there was. At least it was. It, it wasn't boring. They kept trying. They kept doing stuff. I thought that I thought for for a show to keep the audience, I thought that they did okay. I thought Shawn Michaels was good. You know what else? Those Russo shows in two thousand, they also weren't boring. That's a barely a positive. Well, depend. Oh, but uh, some of the Russo shows were boring as shit. Are you kidding me? I watched those TNA shows. I they just were watched horrible. them two years ago. Well, the TNA show. I'm talking about WCW. They sucked. They sucked at a completely different level. I mean, oh, they were. They were, like, I would watch those shows and go, they're going to run people off. I watched the show tonight, and it's like, uh, you know, it's like... Dave, we're at all-time record lows. What no, do you mean to, they haven't run to, people off? No, 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 you're trying to... I am not defending the last six months of this thing. The last six months of this thing have been terrible, without a doubt. I'm just saying, this show tonight, I mean, they may they may get killed by the convention. Um, I mean, it wouldn't shock me, because, and that's out of their control, but... I I didn't think like watching it like this show's going to do. It may do a bad rate, a real bad rating because of the convention, but it was not like a couple weeks ago where I would watch a show and go like, okay, they're doing a record low rating for this for sure. You know, I did not have that feeling watching the show. I thought that it was done in a way where, you know, people would stick with it. They'd want to see Shawn Michaels, you know, as much as possible. Um, you know, the Fight Club stuff is still... That's another enough. one. The main event tonight. A guy who's, whose peak was in the late 90s. What? I guess you could say that Sean's peak was a little bit later than that, but... I mean, his, his first peak was, was the beginning of the Attitude Era. He didn't even make it past 98. Um, he got hurt in... 98. 90, early 98, yes. Yes. Yeah, but he had to come back out. No, but I mean, it's... Look... They, they, that's their whole thing when they, you know, I mean, how many time, how many different guys have they brought back? Ric Flair, Edge, Did Christian. you see the list of stuff they're putting on Peacock, Dave? Yeah, all the guys that aren't There's now. one thing from the 2010s, which was Team Hell No. Everything else. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Dude, Brock Lesnar debuted in 2002. No, but the stuff that they're putting on the Peacock is the second run, not the first run. Well, they got that. So, but, so dude, they're, they're doing Brock Lesnar. Ninety-five no, percent of that it's, stuff it's, is it's the, is the, everybody the, from back in the day. Oh, well, sh no shit. How many times have I written about this? I write about it constantly. Like you, you, you. They do it. They do like a a new marketing deal, and every single person that they're marketing is not on the show. So it's like no. I mean. Their whole thing is about glorifying their past, and by doing so, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with glorifying your past, but they make their past like w when we used to be good, and it's like that's and that's why you know the guys now are they're, you know they, there's these this this roster has a lot of talent, but they're struggling because they're booked like shit. They do not know how to book to save their lives. Uh, they do not know how to make a star. 
I mean, it's it's incredible. It's it's absolutely incredible, and 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 that's the lifeblood of uh you know growth is is new young stars. And the thing is too, is like their idea of young stars that they don't know how to make are like Apollo Cruz, who's been around for years, and they don't know how to make him anyway. But he's like the idea of the young upcoming star. So finally, Sean comes out to talk to Randy Orton, and he does his promo talking about Ric Flair. If it wasn't for guys like him, there wouldn't be any. Sean, Triple H, Batista, Edge, Christian, and finally, thank God, he mentions Drew McIntyre. One modern name in this list. Yep. Doesn't have the same gratitude. Randy doesn't have this gratitude for Flair everyone else has. He says, at SummerSlam, either via Sweet Chin Music or Claymore, you're not going to see it coming. I'm like, SummerSlam? You're going to be there in the match? That's news to me. What is he talking about? Maybe he's going to do a super kick to get revenge. So his music hits, he goes to leave, Randy sneaks in, gives him the RKO, punts him to death. But he's not dead. He gets to his knee, starts crawling to the corner. Drew hits the ring. Randy flees. Randy tries to come back in. Drew starts beating him up outside. Drew goes back in the ring. He's screaming for medics. There have been no medics for five straight minutes or whatever here. And then finally, Randy sneaks in, gives him the RKO, lays out Drew McIntyre, and the show goes off the air. I thought that the finish of last week's show would have been a better go-home finish than You're this telling one. me. Because this one, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's fine. It's all right. You know, you, you go off with Randy Orton having laid out Drew, and Drew was a compelling character. Randy Orton was a compelling character. The main event was built up as something good. So, I mean, that's the one thing. I would. I will say the build-up to the tag team title match was was pretty bad. It was pretty darn bad. I mean, for a million different reasons.